Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, if you're new to my channel, uh, thank you for coming to spend some time with me and checking out my podcast. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for returning to spend time with me. Uh, my name is Andrea on Instagram. I am a Lunitz. Uh, you might know me from my Instagram reels where I put out weekly reels about exercises and tips on posture and ergonomics, all that good stuff. I'm an orthopedic physical therapist by day. Uh, so that is uh, what I do and my expertise. And I just decided to put those two together, my love of anatomy and kinesiology and the human body together with knitting. Um, and here we are. Uh, every episode at the end, I talk about wellness tip as well. Um, so please check me out on Instagram if you have Instagram. Um, I also post my reels here on YouTube weekly as well. So if you're not on Instagram, you can still access that as well. Also on my website, I also have a Patreon where I post weekly exercise videos for subscribers and bonus specialty content. And I also have a Ko-Fi if you would like to support me that way as well. Uh, so I had started this podcast thinking that I would talk about topical things every time because I thought there's no way I'll have enough yarn or stash acquisitions or FOs or whips going on to show you something new every two weeks. Turns out I do. <laughs> um, I've been on quite a shopping spree recently. I think it was my way of dealing with the stress and anxiety over my daughter going to kindergarten. They started school on Wednesday. We actually ended up pulling her out of public kindergarten and keeping her at her Montessori daycare that goes up through elementary school um, because we just feel better about their safety protocols that are in place. Um, so now I feel like my body is coming down from that adrenaline rush of stress. Um, but my way of dealing with it last week was buying a lot of yarn. Yeah, and I have a good amount of it to show you today. A good amount of it was in pre-order, so I will show you those probably in September, October, whenever the pre-orders are done. Um, but in any case, this is going to be another video of me talking about my FOs, my whips, and all the stuff I got in the mail. So let's get to it. So um, first, let me show you um, what I got in the mail. I don't really have an order to how I do things. I kind of just like go with it. Um, yeah. So let me show you what I got. So I went to two different local yarn shops last week. <laughs> Um, and came back with yarn from each of them. So first off, earlier in the week, I went to Hill Country Weavers. It is a local yarn shop in Austin, Texas. They are this huge shop. They've been around for, I think, like 40 years now. And they have the biggest selection of indie dyers that I've ever seen in a yarn shop before. Um, and they were running a, they're currently running a promotion where if you go in and you show them your vaccination card, they will give you 15% off all regular yarns in store. And that doesn't happen very often. And this included, like they have some really nice yarn. They have uh, Lobby and MA now. They have Suburban Stitcher. They have uh, Brooklyn Tweed. Um, yeah, they have a lot of nice indie dyed yarn. Um, and they don't put discounts on those yarn very often. So who was I to say no? And I also had ordered some needles from them online that I went to go pick up. So first I, of course, got some La Vienna May. So you might've remembered a couple episodes I showed you, uh, I showed you that I got Caramel and Merino Sport from La Vienna May. And I said at the time I didn't know what I was gonna do with it, um, but now I have more of an idea because this time, last week, I picked up, I'm gonna put this one down because I can't hold them both at the same time. I picked up May's, this beautiful golden yellow. Yeah. They look so good together. They're such a perfect fall palette. And then I also picked up Rose Quartz. And Rose Quartz, it's just got, it's got the same colors as Caramel and Maze kind of running through it. You can see that here, but it's also got some blues and some purples thrown in there as well. It's absolutely beautiful. And so I'm gonna use all three of these together and make a top and, um, the other thing I got, and I picked this up from another store, but I got um, the Summer Pom Pom magazine finally. And I am going to make this top, the Hoopo, Hoopo top. So what I'll probably do is use caramel for the main body and then stripe maize and rose quartz for the sleeves. And it also has this detailing on the side here too. So yeah, that's my current plan for 
these beautiful stains of La Bien Aimée. Um, yeah, and so this pom-pom, it's beautiful. I don't buy magazines or knitting books very often, um, mostly because I never feel like I'm probably going to knit all the patterns in them. But this one had a good amount of patterns that I think I will definitely knit. Um, yeah, so I decided just bite the bullet and pick it up. Yeah, and it's great. I love Pom Pom's uh, publications. I love how it looks in a book form. Um, the only thing I wish is that it was um, spiral bound because then you could lay the book flat as you look at your pattern. Um, but this is still a great size. It fits, it, it fits in project bags, easy to carry, portable, that kind of thing. So I got Lobby and a May. And I also picked up some Suburban Stitcher. So I picked up Frio in the sock base. This beautiful icy blue. Oh, it kind of matches this. <laughs> this beautiful icy blue. And I also picked up some Slub. And this is in the colorway Hill Country. So um, she Suburban Stitcher made this colorway especially for Hill Country. I think it was for their 40th anniversary um they had a bunch of local dyers make up special colorways for them so this was one of them this is called hill country and you can see it's got similar like it's like an off-white gray base um but it's got like some greens and teals running through and i'm going to my plan right now is to hold these two together and knit something with it yeah because i've discovered so i knit a top out of just slub I knit a V-back tee in just one color out of slub, and it was fine, but I didn't love the texture of slub knit up by itself. So I do want to try knitting it held together with another another yarn, because um, then I think it'll look great. And I think actually that knitting these together, it'll create a really pretty marled kind of look in between the gray cream base and the, and the tealish icy blue. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited for for this yeah so there's that and then i also went to another local yarn store uh the state is cheap i've also mentioned before um i went for other reasons um which i will not disclose yet because it is not public but i will let you know when it is um but then i had some store credit with them and of course i used it right away so first i got some madeline tosh sport and this is a colorway killing me softly so it's this grayish pinkish color with speckles running through i got three skeins of the sport so enough for a top or a sweater and then i also got some ching fiber so ching fiber is a dyer from the uk um so anytime i'm gonna find ching fiber in the states i will usually get something because I don't have to pay for shipping then though it is more expensive um, but this is uh, in the merino fingering base sorry that's my hair this is a more pinkish bluish with lots of speckles running through look at that just beautiful and I also got three skeins of this this is fingering for um, another sweater <laughs> Oh, you can see that I kind of had a theme going on that day when I was there. Yeah, lots of pinks and grays and blues. That seems to be my current palette right now. Um, because I also got some Camellia Fiber Company in the mail. So Camellia, she, um, they release colorways like for each season and they're like limited edition just for that season. And so last week she sent an email saying that they had, they were releasing Blackberry for like summer. And so this is Blackberry. This is on worsted. You can see it's like a pale pink, but it's got brown speckles in there. Eee! So I got a sort of quantity of this. I'm just showing you two of them. Um, but I am really excited for this. Um, yeah, it's so plump and so pretty. I guess I'm really into pale pinks these days because I've got this. If you remember, I think last episode I showed you um, the Secret Garden from Woolberry that is also a pale blush pink. Um, yeah. But just looking at it just gives me like the cozy vibes. And I'm just imagining a cozy, cozy sweater knit up in this and worsted. Yeah, I'm super excited. And then the last bit of yarn that I got in the mail. This is from Hawari Bazaar Company. And so this is the Grand Mosque of Damascus, part of her mosque series. You can see um, 
like a whitish cream base with blue running throughout and green and some speckles. Um, they're beautiful. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. This is DK Way. Um, but thank you, Corinne. Hopefully that's how you say your name. Corinne? Yeah. I'm sorry, that's not how you say your name. Um, yeah. So this, these are beautiful. Hori Bazaar. And then the last thing I got, so when I went to Hill Country uh, Weavers, I went mainly to pick up my order of needles. So I, this week, last week, I decided to treat myself to a set of licky, lick it, needles. I can never know how to say anything. Um, lick, licka, <laughs> L-Y-K-K-E, -K needles. And so these were really popular a couple years ago. They came out on the scene a couple years ago. I was kind of skeptical of them because I don't love bamboo needles at all like I find them super sticky and so I didn't buy into the hype um, but recently I was starting to feel like my metal needles were getting a little too slippery for my my taste and so I decided to give these a try so they are wood needles and this is the umber set so it's like a lighter wood color as opposed to like driftwood which is like a dark grayish charcoaly color um, and they're wood needles but they have a finish on them so they're very smooth um, I used them actually when I was knitting this top earlier this month and um, I really liked it. They're definitely not as slippery as metal is, but they're not sticky like bamboo is. It's like a good in between. Yeah, so I really like them and they're super pretty. So this is the complete set and it goes, starts from US 4s and goes all the way up to 17s and it comes with like two 16 inch cords, two 24, no, two 24 inch cords, two 32 inch cords, and a 40 inch cord. So there isn't a 16 inch one for like, if you do hats or small circumference, or like small circumference knitting. Um, but I think you might be able to buy those like just as fixed circulars separately as well. They do sell fixed circulars too. Um, they also have another line that's called Grow where it's bamboo needles. So they're like green color bamboo needles and they have a finish on them as well. Um, but I, I'm still very hesitant to try any sort of bamboo. So yeah, I went with these and I'm really happy with them. So that is what I got in the past two weeks since the last time I recorded. I've also finished some things. So my first FO are the Garia socks. These are from the 52 Weeks of Knitting, uh, 52 Weeks of Socks book. And these are for, I've been making these for my mom. I cast these on in, I think it was January or February. Finally finished them now. Um, yeah, but they're really beautiful. I really love the detailing. Um, for anyone out there who hates purling, like most of us do, you actually knit the sock inside out, so you're not purling barely. You're just really purling for the slip stitch for these uh, knit ridge going all the way up. And then there's these little kind of flowers at the top. The flowers are not my favorite part to do. Um, I found it a little stressful. Um, yeah, so suffice to say, I'm glad that it was just like, just at the very top that I needed to do them. They are actually a little bit loose. Uh, so I wear like a US women's eight and a half, eight to eight and a half shoe. My mom wears like a seven to seven and a half shoe. Um, and even when I wear these, they feel a little loose to me. Um, like I don't like to wear socks where I feel like the fabric is like moving around on my foot. So when they were still damp, I threw them in the dryer for a couple minutes to shrink them a little bit and it did work. It did shrink them a little bit. I think I could have actually thrown them in for even longer, um, but I ran out of time um, in the moment. Uh, so hopefully these will fit my mom okay. They're really not, they're not as tight as other socks I've knit. And I think part of that is the stitch pattern. I think I knit the uh, larger size, so they give you two sizes. I knit the larger size. I could have, I think I could have done the smaller size and been okay. Um, yeah. But my parents, like, I've knit each of my parents, like, one pair of socks so far. And, like, they only wear them to go to sleep because I think they don't want to wear them out. They don't want to, like, wear holes into them. So they just wear the socks when they go to bed when it's cold. Um, so I guess in that case, if she's just doing that with them, then probably the fit isn't as important. Um, I don't know. But, yeah. But I'm really happy with these. These are a Madeline Tosh in Sugar Plum in the sock base. And then my other FO is this. So this is my Calamity crop top, except not cropped. I did knit it to full length. I'm gonna kind of kneel so you can see the whole thing. So this is by Winter Sweater Knits. 
And this is in the Red Pansy July Monet colorway based on the painting Water Lilies. And I mean, it looks like Water Lilies, doesn't it? Knit up like all the green patches throughout a little bit. Um, so you can see the top is knit and the rest of the body is in linen stitch. Uh, linen stitch is not my favorite. I really hated knitting it the whole entire time. Uh, but I powered through and got through it because I knew the end result would be beautiful. And it is. Um, yeah, so you use, so the pattern is for a crop top. I just knit it a couple inches longer just to make it full length. Um, yeah, um, but I really like it. I really love the way it knit up. I really like the fit of this. Yeah, super happy. And I knit this in record time. I knit this up in 12 days. Um, yeah, because I think the last time I filmed an episode was like almost in exactly two weeks ago. I cast on the same day that I made the last episode, the last podcast episode, and here we are. I finished it and blocked and dried. Yeah, twelve days, and it's been fourteen days. Yeah, about. Um, yeah, I don't think I'll get any faster than this, though. I don't know. The linen stitch did take like take longer for me than like straight stockinette, so who knows? But yeah, but yeah, I am really happy with this. I love the fit. And I love the way the yarn worked up. I didn't alternate skeins at all. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. Another beautiful FO to add to my Monet collection. So those are my two FOs. And in terms of whips, I have not cast anything on. I know last of us, I talked about how I really want to cast things on and I still really do. But I am really close to finishing one of my other whips. So I'm trying to make myself finish that one before I cast something new on. So I'm close to finishing my summer sorrel tea. I've been working on this one for what feels like forever, mainly because it keeps getting put aside for like test knits and Monet projects, things like that. Let me turn this back the right way. There we go. Yeah, so I am, it's kind of curled up a little bit, but I am pretty far into the body now. I tried it on, I did a fit test yesterday and I wanted to do like another three inches until I got to where I was okay with the length and then do ribbing. So I pretty much decided I wanted to knit three more inches. So I placed a stitch marker at where I had, where I was at when I did the fit test. And so I'm measuring from here on down to know when I hit to that, when I hit that three inch mark that I can start ribbing and then start uh, binding off. Um, and that's a little hack for you. It's what I do because I hate trying on my whips. Uh, usually because, you know, I have to transfer stitches onto a cord or onto some yarn to hold it so that I don't yank a ton of stitches off. So I just kind of like avoid it as much as I can, even though I realize that it's super important to do a fit test. So um, I knew I didn't want to do it again. So I just placed a stitch marker so that I know when I measure from here to the edge when I get to three inches, I can just start ribbing and then bind off. So I am about two inches in. So I got not one more inch to do, an inch of the ribbing on the bottom. And then the sleeves, you know, it's just a little bit on the sleeves each. I think it's like the pattern says like two inches or whatever you want on the sleeves. So I think I should um, have this done by the end of the weekend. Today's Thursday. So I think I should have this done by the end of the weekend and have this to show you next time. And then after that, I will cast on something new. So, so this is my current whip that I've been working on. I also cast on the sleeve for my husband's sweater. If you remember the Rift Tee, the black sweater. So he decided that he wanted a contrast cuff. So um, this is from my yarn swap with Megan, Kimchi and Co. So I'm trying to find the label here. This is Forest Fiber Arts uh, in the Targi Worsted base. And this is the colorway Lovebirds. So he chose this as his contrast cuff color. So I cast on the, um, the cuff and the pattern has you knit the sleeves like cuff and then up, which should be interesting because usually sleeves, I feel like go by faster for me because you're, you know, continually decreasing and it gets faster and faster, but this is going to be like the opposite where it gets like longer and longer. So we'll see. I might hate the process. Uh, we'll find out, but yeah, it'll go with like that. So I think it's a pretty good contrast pop, but not, you know, too big of a pop of color. So I've got that. So the cuff will be in this color. And then once uh, the ribbing is done, I'll transition, I'll switch back to the black yarn to make the rest of the sleeve. So there's that. And then um, I do have yarn wound up. Let me grab it. 
I do have Young Roundup ready to cast on. So I had a hard time. So all the time I spent thinking about how much I want to cast something on and all the time I spent working endlessly on stockinette on my summer sorrel tea. I spent a lot of time thinking, trying to decide what to cast on next. And like, let me tell you, I spent a lot of brain space on this, probably more than I needed to. But in the end, I decided to cast on my, I decided that my next cast on will be my Craft Me Not Yarn Co. The Wool Lin yarn and i showed you this like i think episode two or something but this is sarah's wool and linen base so it's 90 percent wool 10 percent linen this colorway is called cafe it's from our macaron collection um and i am going to make a willa tea by this bird knits um that's what i settled on i'd settled on something else initially but i keep changing my mind um and I decided to do this as my next cast on because I do want to try, I have like some, I have this, I've got some 50% cotton for 50% merino yarns in my stash. Um, and you know, before summer passes, I did want to have a, a like, you know, a summer top, I guess, made up um, so that I would just know if I like it and if I like wearing it and that kind of thing. So. Yeah, I decided to cast it. I decided that once I finish my summer sorrel tea this weekend, I will cast this on. And hopefully I'll have some to show you next time. Um, so that's it for everything. Um, yeah, and so I guess we'll move on to the wellness tip before we finish. So my wellness tip for you this week is actually related to my new, new needles. They kind of inspired the wellness tip for this week. So my wellness tip for you is to figure out what kind of material for your needles works for you and what I mean by that is that different materials have different ways that they interact with your yarn um, and that can even change depending on what kind of fiber content your yarn is uh, so I had mentioned earlier that I don't like bamboo because it's super sticky and so I really don't like working with bamboo and I first figured that out years ago when I had a um, project on my bamboo needles that was a what was it? It was like mainly silk yarn. Uh, I can't remember what the content, the exact content, content percentages were anymore, but it was a um, MBK yarn and it was like the, one of the silk bases. And like, let me tell you, it was so sticky. I wasted so much energy, like moving my stitches along the needles because they just wouldn't guide by themselves. I had to sit there and I, like physically like be doing this to move them. And I hated doing that so much that I actually put that project in timeout for like a year before I picked it up again and finally just like was like let's get this over with let's get it finished um because I just couldn't stand working on it so for me it would just waste a lot of energy to be using bamboo needles um and I felt like it just made my process of knitting not as smooth um and uh, whether you realize it or not how you knit and how much where your energy goes when you're knitting can dictate what kind of pain or aches that you can have from your craft um, the other thing too is, uh, so I've been using exclusively metal needles for over five years now. And that worked really well for me until recently when I realized that I was having more instances of my stitches slipping off my needles by accident, um, especially when I was knitting really fast. I think part of it is that in the past five years, my knitting speed has grown considerably. And so I'm knitting much faster. And so sometimes when I'm knitting that fast, my needles like my stitches slide off my needle really fast and I found that when I was working on certain projects that my I was spending a lot of energy gripping my needles and my yarn tightly and my stitches especially my left hand making sure they didn't slide off and that it was leading to some hand and like kind of wrist and forearm pain because I was gripping so tightly trying to keep everything from flying off the needle and that was why I decided to try these uh these wood needles um, to see how it felt and so when I knit this tee I cast on with metal needles and then it was with knitting this one that I started realizing like my hand is like really cramping up quite a bit and it's hurting quite a bit and I'm having to stop and stretch a lot um, and so when I switched the project over to these wood finished needles it was just it felt so much better like I didn't feel like my stitches were going to slip off the needle but they didn't feel like they were stuck either um and they also felt lighter in my hands compared to my metal needles. So then it felt like my hands just weren't carrying as much weight either. And it felt more freeing. So yeah, that's my tip to you. If you feel like you've been, you know, making whatever posture and um, 
ergonomic changes you need to make but you still feel like there's still something in your knitting or crocheting that is creating some sort of tension in your body try different needle types and see if maybe that's what it is for you um, and i imagine with different fibers it'll also be different um like so i don't work with alpaca or surrey because i'm kind of allergic to both but i would imagine with like yarn like that where there's a halo on it um, that it would probably be a stickier yarn especially if you're using wood or bamboo so you know keep that in mind any needles are unfinished um and with uh silk i actually think because silk is this like a more slippery content yarn that it probably would work really well with these wood finished needles because you know it wouldn't get stuck like it does in bamboo but then it wouldn't maybe be too slippery the way that it could be on metal yeah but yeah i mean to each their own we all have our own preferences for different reasons but you know it's just something to think about a wellness tip for you to consider um, in your crafting. Yeah. All right. So I think I'm going to call it quits for today. Thank you again for spending time with me. I hope you enjoy seeing all the beautiful new yarn that I've got in my stash. Uh, all I can think when I'm like looking at all this yarn is like, I have got to knit faster. And part of it is not because I feel, I do feel a little guilt over like buying all this stuff because it's not like I need it. It's just like I want it. Um, but part of it is that I just want to get to knit these beautiful yarns so much. So I'm like, I gotta knit faster so I can work with all this beautiful yarn I have in my stash. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's all. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention these earrings are the Gabriella, the Hello Gabriella earrings, the resin ones I showed you an episode or two ago. Yeah, they're super light and I really love them. Anyway, so happy knitting. Uh, have you? Hope you have a great week. Bye.